Hey everybody, boys from Speaking for us. Welcome to the Commodity Dollar section for May 13th to May 17th. Aussie Dollar, Dollar Cad, Kiwi Dollar. The story in Com Dollar Land this week was a downdraft in the Aussie, pretty significant one, and surprisingly kind of a hold and a test of the 134s in Dollar Cad. Generally, the levels didn't move much, but we did move downward in Aussie, taking out the 70, coming back around it. Um, and essentially hovering around that. And Aussie, to me, is going to be the biggest and most vulnerable story into the front of the week as we look at the com Calm Dollar Complex. The Dollar Cat story was interesting because very, very positive data. I mean, supremely positive data on the labor side that puts, I think, a very, very serious possibility of a tightening condition into the Bank of Canada over the next three or four months. But remember that at this point, Canada is really shadowing U.S., as a North American market. And irrespective of the fact that they're doing better than the US, it's gonna be very doubtful that they're going to diverge their monetary policy. Still, apart from all that, the spread between Dollar Canada, the uh, the twos, uh, I believe the twos, yeah, the twos spread went from like 80 basis points to 60 basis points. That's a significant positive move towards Canada that has not been reflected in the price. So there's a possibility here for us to take out the 34s and really move towards the downward slope of this uh, particular channel. And then Kiwi, of course, just simply holding bid right now. Both Aussie and Kiwi certainly vulnerable to any further U.S.-China problems, but Aussie much more so, because if there is a true trade war with, with China on the U.S. side, it's the industrial goods, it's the industrial exports that are going to suffer the most. And that's a much more of a domain of Australia export market, uh, where the New Zealand market is sort of more soft goods with, uh, with dairy, and with meat and all of those things that have much more inelastic and therefore protects effectively the New Zealand export market from the vagaries of trade negotiations. Now, looking at the calendar, there's not much on the data set for the com dollars except this really one big event. It was really two big events. We have Wednesday CPIs, which we actually think is going to be bearish Canada. So you have, again, in Canada, sort of the same mimic of, of dynamic where very strong labor data, but not much pricing pressure. But I still think that the muted pricing pressure in Canada may, may be less of an issue than they are in the U.S. And the very, very strong growth numbers, along with the fact that oil continues to be at $60, is just net positive uh, generally for Canada. So uh, even if we don't get a tight monetary policy, um, I think the tightening in the spreads of the yields uh, by itself should be positive Canada as we go forward. And then, of course, the really number one event of the week, which is the Australian labor data, where we are considerably bearish. Kathy specifically thinks because of the deterioration in employment and uh, manufacturing services and construction, there's a significant chance here that we could get a, uh, a payback to the downside in the employment data. And remember, this is the absolute key. RBA's essential position was we're not going to cut rates until and unless employment deteriorates. So if this is the situation where the employment does deteriorate, it provides them a perfect, perfect excuse for um, tight, for lowering monetary policy, for creating a more complicated monetary policy over the next meeting. Um, in addition to which, uh, on Thursday, we have the PMI and PPI data out of uh, New Zealand. We're also bearish that because obviously rate cuts signaled softer uh, New Zealand CPI. But the interesting thing I think about New Zealand, and this is the reason why we'll talk about in the crosses, I'm actually bearish Aussie Kiwi, is the New Zealand cut has already happened. It's a one and done situation. The Australian cut is a, may about be about to happen. I think that provides further impetus for an Aussie Kiwi short as we go forward. That's about it, really. It's effectively Canada and Australia on the calendar. Let's take a look at the charts and just see how those things set up uh, into the week. So here's Aussie. And the Australian uh, story here is we're at a shelf. We're definitely at this sort of 70 shelf with a 69.50 as a key support level. But it's the labor data that could be that catalyst that takes the uh, the trade below the 69.50 level. And more importantly, this is the critical thing. If the labor data is weak and the price goes below, it needs to stay below. If we stay below 69.50, that's a very negative technical construct for Aussie and provides the scope for a move towards the 68 handle on a downward shelf. Because basically right now what we're seeing here is a downward leg and a consolidation shelf for the past two and a half weeks around the 70 level for all intents and purposes. So to initiate a fresh downward leg, we really need a significant move that closes uh, significantly below the 69.50 level to give us that impulse to the downside. The Kiwi story, a little bit better, um, and certainly the spike low from two or three days ago is, is the trade against which you, which, against which you trade to the, uh, to the long side. 
The 20 SMA is still over here at around the 66.50, so it provides scope for another 50, 60 points worth of move to the upside. And the caddy story, which is really the interesting story here. So we, we bounced to the 34. 20 SMA has been acting essentially as rock bottom support. Just this has been a tremendously strong support all the way back from March, right? Every time we come into the 20 SMA, it's been, a, it's been a buy, it's been a buy, it's been a buy. And that seems to be the signal here on Friday. But this is a critical thing. If we take out the lows, which I think were like around 80, yeah, the low was around 33.80. If we take out and close below, uh, below the 80, that is the downward impulse that essentially creates a distribution channel here to the top of 35s and opens up the prospect of a move all the way down to 32s, maybe even all the way down to, well, all the way down to 32s effectively as the first um, downward move. So that's something to watch out for um, into the next couple of uh, days uh, in front of uh, Canada, especially, for example, if CPI data comes in hotter than expected, that could be a catalyst that really pushes us to the downward part of this channel. That's how the uh, Comdal is set up. Should be a very interesting week for, for everybody. And I'll certainly be watching the Australian labor data as the marquee event of the week. Wish you guys the best luck, the best trading. Watch last work over now.